Hiya folks, this is going to be a little vlog video this one, there's not much really going on. I've got to do some work on the uh, ST220, I did plan an oil change, but uh, I've had a little bit of a hiccup. This is what happened, I've got to do an oil change, it's the last day before we go away to Scotland, and I've had so much oil, we've been decorating, you would see that on my other channel Butler's Empire if you're, if you're interested, on our Sunday vlog. But uh, anyway, so Jimmy's been using quite a lot of my tools and he's taken some of my tools which I didn't know, to go and see his mate who's stuck in Peterborough, which is about an hour's drive from here. So he's got the trolley jack. So anyway, I wanted to jack the car up. I've got to do an oil change, so I wanted to get underneath it. And uh, the under trail wanted to tighten up as well underneath because we're going on a long journey. And anyway, so I started jacking the car up and I thought, well, I bet he's got my blink. He took my socket set with me half inch uh, bar in and my breaker bar and all that lot. So I've got, a, I've got lucky enough, I've got some impact sockets which are unfortunately half inch. So I've got me impact gun, the battery on that, the large five amp hour battery is flat. I did buy two new batteries. I can't find them from Adam, so I can't do that. I did try them with the two amp hour batteries, which isn't man enough to undo them. So I've had to look around for a wrench. I didn't have a spare half inch wrench or a breaker bar available because Jimmy's got them. So I went down into Jimmy's uh, Gary's poly tunnel. Lucky enough, he's got a half inch ratchet down there. So there's no extension. So I've put the socket on the ratchet and where the sockets are, I've just had this wheel repainted again. Okay, just had it repainted. Uh, it all curb rushed along there. So I've just had it repainted. Jimmy done it at work. So all I found was that. So of course, when you put them on there, look how near that is to the, the wall. But obviously it's been done up with a breaker bar or something. So I couldn't do it. So I've had to slide the extension on the end of that. Because it's so near, I've chipped my wheel again, look. So that ain't made me happy. That's when I went out and I found the extension in one of my other drawers, a spare one. Happy days. When I was able to get that, I'm able to get the breaker bar on the end of it, slide that tube on the end of that, and I got them all undone. Then I've got to get the trolley jack down because Jimmy's also got my low level trolley jack. So I can't get it under here. It won't go under here where the jacking point is. And I can't get it underneath there because I've only got a small one trolley jack, but it's quite deep. Anyway, cut a long story short, I thought, no one done these wheel nuts, it's no good now. And then I asked myself a question, after an hour, struggling backwards and forwards, trying to find the bits, getting the bits, sussing out I can't undo it. What am I doing the bloody wheel for? I'm doing an oil change. I didn't even need to take the wheel off. So that just shows you how things go. All I need to do is check the car up so I can get access to the under tray, get the under tray off and get the oil filter out. So anyway, that all went out the window. I've done the wheel back up, put the car back. Lucky enough, I've took that, uh, I've pulled the dipstick out, I've checked it. The oil's pretty clean because I've never done an oil change on this, but it was about halfway, so I've topped it up. So that's all well and good now. I'm just checking the water level in there. It's above the minimum mark, but I'm just going to put some more in there. Power steering fluid's okay. I've got to check the washer bottle, and also the brake fluid system's okay over there. I've checked that. We've got a brand new battery on it. So all in all, that's how my day's gone. We're decorating the spare room, which we were just putting the furniture back in, so that's all going okay. I've got a lawnmower to repair, because my daughter Tracy, who lives in Scotland, I said I'd bring her up a lawnmower, so I'm going to do that now. So I'm just going to finish off here, but before I do finish off here, I'd just like to thank all the subscribers from uh, Retro Restore, who donated to uh, Jeff and Jenny's Classic Restorations channel, who lost his shed a couple of, I think it was last video it might have been, where his uh, whole shed and his car and all his bikes that he'd restored, uh, all his tools, everything went. We managed to raise £1,040 for him, uh, to which he was really, truly thankful. If you go over to his channel, I will leave a link in the description below. He did do a thank you video, but I actually freed up that money for him now, and uh, I've sent that off to him now, so he's actually got that now. He can start to rebuild his uh, tool collection, and he's ordered a new, sh new shed, apparently. So all's going well. And I'd also like to thank some of these uh, companies who are uh, friends of our channel, one of them is uh, uh, Carl and Pippa from Electrostatic Magic. They're the powder coating people. They actually watched my video and contacted me uh, to get Jeff, Jeff's address because they sent him a free system uh, to get him up and going again because he did have all that powder coating equipment which all melted in, in the actual fire as well. So thank you very much to Carl and Pippa from Electrostatic Magic, the powder coating people who I use and also Jeff uses as well. And also another company which Gary's done a few review videos for, Evolution Tools. 
Uh, they uh, sent Gary some tools, but they actually contacted Gary after seeing the video as well, and they uh, said they'll send something to Jeff, some uh, new tools to help him out as well, which they have done that as well. So thank you again for two very good companies who have stepped up, who do watch our videos, who have actually helped a, a, a man in his moment of need as well. So Jeff has done a thank you or video for everyone to see, and uh, it should get him going again. So thank you again, you lot of subscribers. You've helped sort his problem out. He's not a young man, he's like me. He's, uh, I think he's mid-50s, Jeff, early to mid-50s. So, um, you know, he's had a lifetime's worth of stuff and he's done loads of project repairs and uh, stuff on his channel. Uh, do check him out and give him a subscribe as well, just to build him up a little bit as well. Anyway, thanks for that. So I'm just going to finish off checking the fluids on here and uh, then we'll go out and have a look at this lawnmower. So I'll see you in a minute. Okay, I've just dug out this old lawnmower. It's in a bit of a state. I don't know how it, if it works or anything, so let's just try and give it a prime. Oh, I don't think it's got any fuel in it. No, it's totally dry. It's got some sort of residue in the bottom, which looks like oil, but um, let me get some petrol. Right, let's get some fresh fuel in it. I don't even know if this was a runner at all, but uh, it might need a carb service. I'm not sure yet, but we're just trying some fuel in it. The deck's solid, but it's a bit rusty and scabby, but it might do a return anyway. Saves a buying a new one anyway. So let's just screw that onto there. I won't fill the tank up, because I'm not sure, as I say, whether or not the, top, the carb's got to come off. So let's just put some juice in it, just to get it above the suction tube. Like that. Right, that's that. It probably needs a bit of a paint up, but uh, as I say, it's not a one I'm selling, so I'm not really too worried about it, to be honest with you, as long as it's serviced, it runs the blade sharp and all that sort of stuff, which is what I can do for her. And let's give that a prime now. Right, fuel sucking up. Right, okay, let's try that. Right, pull the handle up, give that a pull. There's anything there? Let's try that again. One, two, three. Well, we should have fuel there now. Nope. Let's get it in the workshop and see why it ain't starting. Right, well, the first thing I'm going to try is to take the air filter off because I don't know whether or not the engine it's being able to suck up fuel or whether that was oil in there initially. Look at that, look. It's been turned up the wrong way before. So I'll just squirt some neat fuel in the way of easy start, which I've got here. Just into that intake. And just try a pull again. Just want to make sure there's nothing that can get sucked underneath there. If it don't kick off this time, then we know we've got a spark issue. <laughs> Nothing. And that pull cord's not doing it what it should do, look. No. Right, so, I'm going to take the spark plug out. And just try another spark plug in there, first of all. In fact, I've got my tester here somewhere. Alright, so I can get over and see the front of the engine. I'm just going to take the dead man off. The dead man's handle. Just clamp that in position like that. That way I can pull it over uh, here. Let's get that down there. See, look at that, look, look. Something's sticking there, isn't it? But I can see if it's got a spark. As I've just put my tool down there now, so. Yes, it's got a spark. There we go. I can see a good spark there. Okay, well that's interesting. I'm just gonna take the spark plug out. We know we've got a spark. So two things I'm thinking of is um, low compression or the thing has hit something and it's thrown the timing completely out. So I'm gonna take the spark plug out first and then we'll do a little compression test on it first. As soon as we've got spark and fuel, we should have it there sort of thing, you know? So let's get that plug out. Ah, just found the problem. I think the problem is that the gap on the spark plug is so small 
fully oiled up, although there was a spark there, and it feels like there's water in there. I've just spat what I think is water out of there. Yeah, so I'm going to get the airline, first of all. That's just changed my theory again. Right, so I'm just going to blow in that spark plug hole. Now, there is some liquid coming out. I'm presuming that that's water. Yeah, it could be. See it blowing through the back of the carb there? Look, blowing up through the carb, look. You see that? That looks like water to me. Right. Okay. So, I've got another plug. I'm just going to prime the cylinder with some uh, easy start. There we go. And I did notice that when I squirted stuff in there, it was coming out of the carb as well. I'm hoping that it's not a stuck valve because uh, the valve could be uh, stuck in the open position, which means it's got no compression. So let's just put that back on there. So we know we've got spark. We know we've got fuel. So let's try this now. Yes, so my diagnosis, oh that light's bad in here isn't it? My diagnosis was correct folks. The initial diagnosis was that we probably had a fueling issue. Then it, we went on to the spark, we found we had a spark. And if you've got spark and fuel and compression, you should have a, you should have a running engine. So then I was thinking that the, it may not have compression. We were just about to do a compression test, that's why I took the spark plug out. Seeing the water in there and that monkey plug made me blow out all that inside. We saw the dirty water come up through there. Uh, we cleaned that out with an airline. We then put fresh fuel directly in there and that started out straight away. So that was how you, you sort of diagnose things as you go along sort of thing. We have got a hunting issue. That means the carb has got to come off and have a new carbon uh, gasket and diaphragm on it. So I'm going to take that off now and then we'll get this all cleaned up and uh, we'll see how it runs then before we finally clean it up. Right, that's the carb off. And I don't like working on them when they're in that state, folks. So I'm just going to empty that petrol out into a container. Like that. Because that's still usable. We're going to use that. That's fresh petrol. So, this thing can do with a little bit of a clean. So I'm going to take this outside. And we'll give it a big, big bit of a clean down with some um, carb cleaning spray and a brush to agitate it clean it all off before we start stripping it down because you don't want to be getting dirty hands with all that crap there and also that stuff entering the fuel tank so let's take it outside right okay let's give it a little bit of a dousing just with some carb cleaning spray first of all get rid of all this old muck on it or loosen it up at least get an old paintbrush and just agitate it i do hate working on dirty greasy stuff See, some people service these carbs and they don't even clean them. To me, that's just bad maintenance skills. Well, I'd like to send it back to the customer clean. At least you know you've uh, got someone who does has got a bit of thought into their uh, work. And don't forget, if you've got an airline, folks, use it. And whenever you're using an airline, folks, make sure you've got your safety glasses on. This stuff can go everywhere. And don't forget around the outside as well, folks. That gets filthy as well. All right, that's a lot better. Let's take it inside and give it a service okay so the things we're looking for folks first of all make sure that ring is seated in there and make sure the o-rings in there we're just going to remove the carb now by the five phillips screws around the uh the outside and this then enables us to lift the uh, carb straight off there we go just lift it up comes out like that you've got a strainer on there you've got a little spring there to be careful of plus your five screws like that so 
So let's have a little inspection because I can see straight away what the problem is. This diaphragm which sits here it's got very very baggy there and that's where you get the surgeon when you get the the, the um the baggy diaphragm there it's full of crap inside the pickup this acts as the float bowl although there's no float in this case but that's the chamber where the, the, the fuel seats and uh the pickup tube there which goes through in and that's clean lucky enough so we've got no problems with that whatsoever so i'm going to peel back this um gasket and diaphragm that's the piece we need to change. There's actually two things there. You've got a gasket and a diaphragm. The diaphragm goes on first. With our carb cleaner, I'm literally going to clean out in there. Sometimes it's just good to agitate at the bottom. There's like a little cross thing at the bottom there, and that's where some dirt tends to pick up. So I like to give that a good scrape round. Also the surface here, and then I'll take the outside and blow this out again, and you'll see the difference in the state of that. So let me go and do that now. Right, let's just dry that off with a, a cloth. I've also blown out the uh, tank as well, folks, in case there's any residue or crap sitting in there. So let's have a little look at that now. Can you see how clean that is in there now? Look. And that's what you're looking for so that is ready to go back on i've also blown down these chambers here into there into that little hole there and that little hole there as well so that's all we need to do with that right so i've got these replacement gaskets here i normally buy the brig stuff but um i did all of these by mistake and uh, i'm not sure whether they're genuine or well i won't say genuine they're supposed to be a direct replacement from quite a good company so um that's the ones there they are made in china but they're no not normally very good but i'm going to try it anyway so there's your two gaskets, uh, sorry, there's your diaphragm there. Can you see how flatter that one is, look. So the diaphragm goes on first. That literally just sits on there like that. And then the gasket follows it on top, just sits above there like that. Now, before I do put this back on, I'm just gonna remove that little spring. I'm just gonna give this a spray down and that little strainer there, like that. Just take them five screws out. So I'm just going to give this a soak in with some um, carb cleaner as well and give it a blowout with the um, airline because I don't know if you can see there, look, there's some residue in there, look. So once I've done that, this should be good to go back on. Right, that's nice and clean now, as you can see. Blown through there, blown through there, there, down the main jet there. So there's your strainer, that can go back on now. Where's that little spring gone? I know it's here somewhere. There we go, that can go back on that tube in there. And just gotta be careful when you put this back in that you don't jog anything. So I'm just going through there like that. Line the screws. Now these are the proper screws for this. Some people change these screws. Can you see that leading edge on there where there's no thread? That's designed to drop in the thread or the hole and line it up. So place all them in first. They'll all drop in, provided you've got the gasket and the diaphragm lined up correctly. So you ain't got to tighten anything down yet. Just get them five screws in. They should fall in nicely. When you've done that, just nip them up. Hold it in place as well with your thumb, just to make sure it don't move. And just, you do two rounds here. So you go round there. I like to go diagonals. I'm not pulling them down tight. I'm just literally settling them down first. Three, four, one more, one more. And then I'll just snug them up like that. I'm not going mad. Just snug them up. Don't over tighten them. Because what you can do is to warp them. These little plastic carbs if you over tighten them. Four, one last one and five there you go and that is the carb restored back to should be hopefully fully working order without that surging the rings in there the o-rings in there and the push to prime bulb is working fine we've just replaced that little hood there that's the uh, inlet manifold and also the little washer that goes on the top for the carb sealing ring between that and the air box Right, let's turn our attention now 
just over to this area here as you can see which is blinking dirty before I do anything I just want to block up the um, holes because I don't want to push anything through them inlet manifolds or likewise down the um, breather tube into the engine where the oil is so I'm just going to plug them up while I have a little clean up around it, look at the state of that bracket look <coughs> one place to look out for folks is in here because you get a lot of grass caught under here where the fins are so just make sure that that gets clean behind there because that can cause your engines to overheat in there just pull that forward there we go a bit more on that and then a bit with the old airline So I'm just going to give it a bit of a bit of a wipe over. Right, okay, that's that. Pull that out of there. Pull that out of there. Just clean this bracket up as well because that's filthy. Look at that, look. Right, okay. There we go. So with this carb, you literally get that um little hook there, there's a little hook here hook this back into that little hole which you can't really see and that pushes back onto that tube there and the one at the back there and that hopefully should be it put me a little um, retainer in there get me 13 mil going through that spacer Like that. I'm not going to tighten it fully up yet until I've got the front one in, which is the little 10 mil that goes in here. There you go, that goes in there. I'm just going to nip that front one up. Yeah. Now there is a screw missing on that one for the uh, pull cord. Okie dokie, so I've uh, cleaned the air filter box and also put a brand new air filter in there So if we put that on there like that Put the cover back on and Just screw that down That means we've had a new spark plug in it We've had a carb clean Gasket and diaphragm which means it's had a carb service basically that's all right before we go any further i just want to check the uh, engine oil have a little look on that do you know what i think that looks all right in out yeah that, i'm gonna leave that it's just a tad over the fall um, only a tad, if it was a lot over the fault I'd drain some out but it's literally just a little bit over the fault so I'm going to leave that as it is there I'm just going to pull some of this rubbish away from this side of the uh, lawnmower right, okay I'm quickly investigate this pull cord here just to see what's going on there it might be that it's just corroded because it's been standing for a long time so I'll just undo this 10 mil or three apes depending on where you are in the world this 10 mil exhaust bolt nut that holds down the uh, pull cord cover and there's also one in the front here this is an instructional video folks I've done so many of these and there's so many of these on the uh, internet it's just me doing a job in the garage or in the workshop tinkering taking you along for the journey right let's lift that off tube's got to pull out of there isn't it there we go I think it's just dry 
it's had a new pull cord on it, you see. Yeah, I think it's just dry. I'm just going to put a bit of lube on that spindle mechanism there. And just underneath. There we go. Just let it run through. I literally just think it's dry. Oh, straight away, that's done the job. Look at that, look. Perfect. Right, so that can go back on. Just make sure that... That is moving freely, which it is. Yeah, I'm happy with that. There we go. Make sure your cable at the front there is not being pinched, your HT lead. And I'm just gonna screw this back down. Just put a bit of lube on that thread, it's a bit dry. There we go. I haven't looked at the blade yet obviously so I'll be doing that in a second I just wanted to make sure that the oil was okay before I start it up and the last one and this side put a bit of lube on that thread and all they're very dry and just screw this one up this side folks I've got videos of me doing all this so I know you're not seeing it really close up this time but uh as i said it's just a me in the workshop right i've just found another screw for this that's the thing when you work on a certain lawnmower you do collect loads and loads of parts for them so that's the, actually the right screw for the job like that okay i just want to have a little look underneath before i do start it again Let's take that off. Grass bag. That can go back up. Where is it? Hold on. The pull cord is can go back up here. That sits in there like that. So let's tip that back. I want to have a little look underneath. <laughs> Plastic bag wrapped around it everywhere. You ain't gonna be able to see that, folks. But uh, it's just a plastic bag wrapped all the way around the boss and that's the fact the blade ain't too bad so that's what I've just taken off I'm gonna leave that as it is because that blade actually looks okay yeah there you go so let's put that back on its on its feet we just put some fuel in it that old fuel I've taken out of it take it outside and we'll give it a start up right okay let's try it let's hope it runs folks one, two, three, four, five. Here we go. One. Happy days. There we go, happy days, sorted. So that'll do my daughter a turn to her. I can uh, get a new one maybe next year sometime. It'll definitely last them for the year anyway. These little Briggs and Stratton classic engines go on well. Simple to maintain. All you've got to do is check the oil. Don't overfill these ever. And uh, put some decent fuel in it. And they normally start and they can run pretty much on anything. Anyway, thanks very much. So I know there's not been a lot of content coming out recently, folks, but um, we've been having a very busy time on our Butler's Empire channel and that pays our wages so that has to take precedence anyway do have a back look uh, look at our backlog of videos on this channel there's over a thousand i'm sure you'll find something else there you're interested in thanks very much we'll see you in the next video and until then bye for now